Hi, in this video, I will talk about IPv6 address management. And I will try to explain quickly IPv6 networking in a simplified way. And uh, we will tackle IPv6 address plan for internet provider with slash 32 network assigned. And also I would like to talk about difference between assigning a slash 64 prefix to end customer and slash 56 prefix. So let's start with uh, the IPv6 address and uh, how it works, what it means. As you can see, there is a difference between IPv6 and IPv4, while IPv4 is uh, four octets uh, and it makes 32 bits. Here it's obvious that we have more data, so it's a longer. So now we have eight parts uh, that uh, forms IP address and each part has 16 bits, which makes the IP address of uh, 128 bits. Uh, but what means each single part of it? Uh, we start with the first part, which is a global part of IP address. And this is managed by, uh, by the registry, by the RIPE NCC, ERIN, EFRINIC, uh, all these uh, uh, organizations that uh, allocate IP addresses to companies. Uh, we, as an internet providing company, we receive slash 32 or slash 29 network. This is the network that is assigned to us and we can announce it from our VGP and we can start subnetting this network. So in this example, I'm talking about subnetting to network slash 40. So the slash 40 network is something that we are allocating to our NAS servers, to our data center. So this is the part of the network uh, that is logically somehow connected and we use it uh, for certain purpose. So then from this network, if we once allocated it to one, two, three uh, NASes, we can go further and we can assign IP addresses to CP devices, to end users. And there are two approaches. The first one is simply assign slash 64 network. And then from this slash 64 end, using, end user device is forwarding, forwarding it to, to the LAN. But there are some disadvantages that I will show in a separate slide. So uh, the preferred option and recommended option is and best practice is to assign slash 56 to end users, at least slash 56. Some companies can assign slash 48, but uh, I think slash 56 is enough. And then these are the results. So this we take the network. 1000 slash 60, uh, 56 and then we create from this network we have 256 networks that are part of it that are slash 64 that can be used by our CPE device and that can be used inside LAN so we can have up to 256 LANs different segments with different IP addressing and uh, this is the result this is the device IP so when we take the global part of it and when it's say slash 32 port, and then we go to the networking part up to here. So, and then this is what customer um, device creates. So this is the IP address that was uh, automatically generated by customer device, but this is the, the final IP address. If you want to check IP addressing, there is a very nice site that you can use to calculate IPv6 and to understand how many networks are in which part. So this is what me show me quickly the example. If I go there and I say, okay, I have this network, slash 56, how many 64 I have here? And it shows me that I got 256 uh, slash 64 prefixes in this network. So when I assign it to my end user, end user still can have 256 subnets inside his LAN. Okay, so this is an example of subnetting. And let's go to the next topic. It's an example of uh, IP address plan. Um, just to recap, when I say, okay, we take slash 32, assign slash 40 to high size data centers, and then slash 40s to NAS routers. This is the result that we receive, slash 40, slash 40, slash 40. We can use it in three different NASs. And then this is the recommended prefix to assign to end user to understand how many networks we have in each slash 32. We can have up to 256 slash 40s that we allocate to different zones, regions, NASs. And then inside each of this slash 40, we have 4,000 
slash 56 available. And as I said, 156 network includes 256 uh, slash 64. Okay. And why not to assign slash 64? Because so this is uh, ripe explains it. And I can also show an example uh, why we are limited by slash 64 assignment to end uh, user device. So it's strongly discouraged to assign prefixes unless there are very, uh, there are some strong reasons. And the main reason is that if we give one slash 64 network to customer device, it means that he's limited to one LAN. So if he wants in the future to extend his LAN to get different VLANs, if we need to add him some new service, alternative SSID, uh, whatever, it's not possible. We need to renumber, but this can mean for us to renumber the whole network. So that's what, why to renumber it. Let's make it from the beginning correctly to avoid this. And the example is, I also want to show you how we manage it in Splinks, IPv6 in general. So if I go to my IPv6 networks, here you can see there is an IPv6 32 that I have added. And now the next step, I can add this slash 40 network and I will call it NAS1 and I'll uh, give it to my PPPoE uh, one concentrator. So I just need to remove the first zero. And yeah, their network is already used because I probably have added it already there. Let, let, let me refresh. Yeah, the network was added and now I can use this network slash 40 network to allocate IPs to customers. So let's go there, use first available customer with PPPoE connection. And then here I can delegate him the prefix. So here you can see if I will allocate slash 64, what is my limitation that let me explain it now. This is how I assign IP address to end user now I go to my uh, Mikrotik home router and there you see that I have several VLANs. So I have several VLANs and I cannot get more than one range to forward it there through this VLAN. So I can use only one. So this is, this is the problem. So if I remove it, if I have only one LAN in my network, this is fine. So I just, what I need to do is I receive uh, the pool, okay, and then and uh, in the HCP client, I receive my pool prefix. And then what I do is I make the IP address for my interface and I advertise it to all devices inside my LAN. But if I have multiple VLANs, this is an example here. So if I say, okay, I want to use the first IP from pool that I receive from my ISP and give it or assign it to Ethernet 4, I'm stuck. So it gives me the error the IP pool was exhausted and I cannot use more addresses. So that's why we need to change slash 64 and instead of it use slash 56. So here are available IPs. So let's use this one, save. And now when I will click there, you see that I will get both IPs available there. So Let's remove this. And here is my first, and I will do the same thing for my second interface for either four and from pool that I receive pool v6. Check this out. So we can see that we have slash 64 that starts 101, slash 64 that starts 102. And let's check what I receive as an end user. So if I open my network preferences, I think this one, this one is a previous network that I got, but I have to receive one of these uh, networks. If I will now quickly reconnect my LAN and open the configuration of my network. So here you can see this is my IP 102 and this is the IP was created. So this is the way how I can assign IP addresses in Splinks IPv6. And of course, everything is tracked. So when I go to my uh, networking IPv6 networks and in the list, if I click refresh, if I open this network slash 40, it shows me that this 
IP range was used, it was assigned by customer and it is used by customer that is online. So it's automatically tracks it and uh, saves it here in my IP address management system. So thank you for your time. In the next video, I will be explaining how to configure Miklatik routers with IPv6 and also CPU devices with IPv6. Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for your time.